In this video, we are going to cover flow calculations for HVAC systems. Now, this video builds off some existing knowledge that we already have uh, with regard to my video for HVAC airflow calculations. So if you haven't watched that yet, you may want to take a peek at that, specifically the first half, because I do cover some terminology that you'll find helpful when using flow calculations. So with that, what or why do we need to use flow calculations, right? So whether you're a design engineer or a service technician, flow calculations are incredibly important. So flow or water calculations are necessary to ensure that heating and cooling systems are designed in a way that move the correct amount of heat energy through a building by means of a hydronic system. Flow calculations are also a critical component to pipe and pump sizing. Now, flow calculations are a key component of troubleshooting hydronic system problems in both HVAC and process piping applications. So if you're a service technician, knowing this calculation is critical to either determining if the pipes are sized correctly or if a pump is sized correctly or incorrectly, or maybe there's a blockage in the system or a valve is closed off, or maybe even your boiler isn't working correctly. Maybe you have a burner that's only partially firing, whatever it may be. You can find that out through this calculation. Now, as a design engineer, this is incredibly important as well because you need this calculation in order to size your pipes. You need this calculation to size your pumps. And you need to make sure that the system that you're designing for, let's say a boiler, has enough flow going through it so that you get the proper uh, delta T or temperature difference through that boiler so, it's, so it condenses or whatever it may be. So regardless of what piece of the pie you have in industry, you need to know this calculation. So let's cover some terms specific to this calculation. The first one is going to be BTU, or BTUH specifically, and this is the amount of heat energy over the duration of one hour. Of course, this is the typical measurement for heating appliances. So this is a moment where I'm going to say, if you are unsure of what a BTU is, or just have maybe like, ah, I've heard of a BTU before, but I'm not quite sure exactly what it is, go ahead and check out my HVAC airflow calculation video because I go into a, a bit of depth of what a BTU is uh, and actually give you an example of how to actually see a BTU as opposed to just feel a BTU or just see it in a calculation. So check that out. The second term we have is GPM. A GPM is a measurement of fluid in gallons per minute. There's our GPM, gallons per minute. Now, a GPM is the volume of fluid moved over the duration of one minute. And we'll get into this a, a little more in just a moment. Now, the last term is going to be triangle T, and the triangle horse is delta. So delta T, where delta means change, and T stands for the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Therefore, delta T is the change in temperature. Now, some examples of this is or are, this morning, the outdoor temperature was 5 degrees Fahrenheit. This afternoon, the temperature was 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The delta T is therefore 30 degrees because I went from 5 up to 35. It's a difference of 30. So the change or the delta is 30. Now, the second example is a can of soda at room temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. After the can was in the refrigerator for a day, the temperature of the soda was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Therefore, the delta T is 28 degrees Fahrenheit. I started with a can at room temperature. I put it in the fridge, and the temperature went down 28 degrees. Therefore, my delta is 28. Now, you'll notice that the delta T is always a positive value, regardless if the temperature went up or went down. In example one, my temperature increased. I went from 5 degrees to 35 degrees. In example two, my temperature decreased. I went from 68 down to 40, but my delta T is still a positive value. Now you may be saying, well, geez, what if I'm working on a chiller system or a chilled water system as opposed to a heating system? Doesn't matter. The, D, the delta T will always be positive. You will know if you need to make the water or the solution warmer or colder. You will know that, but the delta T cannot be negative. It has to be positive. Now let's go back to GPM for a minute, or gallons per minute. So again, our terminology here, or our definition, excuse me, is a measurement of fluid in gallons per minute, the volume of fluid moved over the duration of one minute. 
So if I have an empty one gallon milk jug and I put a faucet up to it and I run that faucet for a duration of one minute and at the end of that my jug is full of water, my flow is therefore one gallon per minute. I ran my faucet for one minute for one, exactly one minute and I got exactly one gallon out, my flow is one GPM. If I take a Homer bucket, one of the five gallon buckets from Home Depot, it's has a volume of five gallons and I turn on another faucet and I run that faucet for one minute and lo and behold my homer bucket fills up with water my flow is then five gallons per minute okay it's just that simple you open up a pipe let it flow how much flows in the duration of one minute how much fluid flows in one minute that's all a GPM is okay so let's take a look at our fluid formula. Now again if you uh, watch my HVAC airflow calculation video this is gonna look shockingly familiar because it is it's the same formula with some different variables all right so going through this our BTU is a measurement of heat is equal to a GPM which is a measurement of fluid flow times the Delta T which is change in temperature times 500 which is our convenience factor or our magic Okay, it's a little different for our, uh, our airflow calculations. Um, that's because air and water have different properties, right? Air or, or heat transfers through air different than it does with water. That's where this 500 number comes in. It's all about how the heat transfers through that water. I'm not going to get into it any more than that, except for trust me, 500 is the magic number. All right, so on the bottom here, we have a note. The fluid for this formula is water. If using a mixed solution, such as glycol, use the correction factor table for that specific solution. So an example of this, I live in the Northeast United States, and we get some pretty cold winters up here. And sometimes we have to put pipes or even sometimes appliances in unconditioned spaces where we could get sub-freezing temperatures. Therefore, when we do that, we want to make sure that we're not just using straight up water because the water is going to freeze, it's going to turn into ice, it's going to blow pipes, bad things are going to happen. So we have to have some type of antifreeze solution, and a lot of times we'll use glycol. Now, since glycol has different properties than water, which is why it helps us not freeze stuff, it also has different uh, transfers of heat through that solution, right? Whether it's propylene glycol, ethylene glycol, I don't care what it is, it, you, you could be you're using anything you, you'd like for antifreeze, I guess. Um, you have to make sure that you are using the proper correction um, factor for that solution. And you'll find that in the technical uh, data or technical manual of that specific solution. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you're going through, especially if you live in an area like me where we're, we're doing a lot of antifreezing of our hydronic systems. All right, so let's put our formula into practice. So scenario one. You have been asked to find an appropriate replacement for a gas-fired boiler that is nearing the end of its useful life. Unfortunately, the model number is unable to be read. A service technician has provided you with the GPM and the delta T of the unit. That yielded our GPM at 8 and our delta T at 20. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is come up with our solution, and doing that requires us to use our equation BTU equals GPM times delta T times 500. Now I can't stress enough, whenever you're using this calculation, write it down in your scratch paper, right? Just, just, just write it down because there may be times when you're doing conversions or you have, you have you know, a million other things that you're, you're trying to figure out. And this is a very simple equation, but since it's so simple, it only takes one mistake to throw the whole thing off, right? So write down that equation. That's the first thing I always do whenever I'm using this calculation. The second thing I do is I then replace my variables. So again, BTU is equal to 8 GPM, because that's what my service tech told me, at times a delta T of 20, again, my service tech told me this, times my magic number of 500. So my variables are now replaced. And now I want to go ahead and I want to work the formula. All right, so by working the formula, I'm just doing the math. So I'm going to take my BTU is equal to first 8 times 20, which gives me 160, times 500. I'm going to work that out, and it gives me a BTU of 80,000 BTUs. Okay, this is, of course, not withstanding any efficiencies or AFUEs. All right, so we just work it very simply, just like our HVAC uh, airflow calculation. It works in the exact same way. Our variables are just a little different. All right, let's take a look at scenario two. Now, for this one, I'm going to read through it. Once I've read through it, go ahead and pause the video. And uh, once you think that you've gotten to the solution, go ahead and play it again, and we'll work through it together.
So scenario two, you've been asked to find an appropriate replacement for a gas-fired boiler that is nearing the end of its useful life. Unfortunately, the model number is unable to be read. A service technician has provided you with the GPM and delta T of the unit. So our GPM is equal to 12 and our delta T is equal to 18. So knowing what you know now, go ahead and pause the video, work to the solution, and when you think you've had an answer, go ahead and play the video and we'll work through it together. All right, let's work the solution. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my solution. So BTU equals GPM times delta T times 500. Then I'm going to replace my variables. I know that my GPM is 12. My B, or yeah, my GPM is 12. My delta T is 18, and my magic number is still 500. And I'm going to work the formula. So my BTU is equal to 12 times 18, which gives me 216 times 500, and that gives me 108,000 BTUs. Now let's take a look at something else. All right. So what if? There's always that what if scenario. What if we need to find something other than BTUs? So the example so far, we've assumed that we needed to find the BTUs for our appliance. But what if we already know the BTU because our appliance is fine and we need to find another flow value? It's just as simple as rewriting the formula. So we can rewrite the flow formula depending on what variables we have. If we have two known val values, we can find the third. Right, just like again, I in the last video I talked about, if you're familiar with Ohm's law, it's the same idea. If you have two, you could find the third. It's no different here. And we're just gonna use the distributive property to accomplish that. So for example, the, the, the formula we have been using all the way through so far is to find BTU, and we know the GPM and delta T, then we're gonna use BTU is equal to GPM times delta T times 500. We know that, we've, we've already practiced this one. But what if we want to find the GPM? And we know the BTU and the delta T. Well, then we're going to use GPM, because that's what we're looking to find, is equal to BTU divided by delta T divided by 500. That'll give us our GPM. Sort of the same effect, if we need to find our delta T and we know the GPM and the BTU, then we use the formula delta T that's what we're looking for, is equal to BTU divided by GPM divided by 500. So with that in mind, let's try scenario three. So you've been asked to size a new primary pump for an existing boiler. The existing pump is old and corroded to the point where no information about it can be read. However, you were able to obtain the following from a previous boiler service record. Now you have a BTU of 60,000 BTUs and you have a delta T of 20. So we need to find GPM in order to, to size our pumps because two critical things that we need for pump sizing is our flow, which is our GPM, and our head or our pressure for pump sizing. And I'll, I'll do pump sizing in another video. So with this, since we're looking for GPM and we know that we have our BTU and our delta T, we're going to use our GPM is equal to BTU divided by delta T divided by 500 equation. Again, I'm going to write that down. Now, all I need to do is replace my variables. So my BTU is equal to 60,000. My delta T is equal to 20. I'm going to work the formula for GPM is equal to 60,000 divided by 20. That gives me 3,000, and I'm going to bring down my convenience factor, and it gives me a GPM of 6. All right, so here's the thing, and I'm, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Whenever I look at formula or equations that have division in them, my brain kind of like just it pauses for a second. It's like, ah, I don't like it. I'd rather have multiplication. And because of that, I always like to kind of sanity check myself. Okay, because going through a calculation like this and getting it wrong, like say for example, you know the the, the difference of having a a pump that pumps six gallons a minute and a pump that pumps sixty gallons a minute could be a matter of you know hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Right, so a simple calculation and doing a sanity check on a simple calculation is definitely worth it. Um, you only have to do this a couple times in in a, a non-educational setting to make it really set in. So I've had it happen a couple times. So I'm very sensitive to this. Um, so always sanity check your formulas. So 
Let's take a sanity check of that same scenario. So if you're not sure if you moved or rearranged your formula correctly, just sanity check it. And using the last scenario, we know that the BTU that was given to us was 60,000 60, BTUs. We know that the delta T was 20 because that was given to us. And we calculated a GPM of 6 GPM. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a formula that I'm, I like, that my mind likes, and it has multiplication in it. So I'm going to go right back to that first formula that I used, which is BTU equals GPM times delta T times 500. And I'm going to replace what I calculated right here, the 6 GPM. I'm going to dump that into my calculation. And if I did everything correctly, the BTU that I come up with in my sanity check should equal the BTU that was given to us from the service tech record. Okay, so let's work that through. So I have, I'm going to replace my variables. Again, I have 6 GPM times a delta T of 20 times my convenience factor of 500. I'm going to go ahead and work the formula. Let's first take 6 by 20, and that's going to give me 120. I'm going to times that by my convenience factor of 500. If I multiply those together, it gives me a BTU of 60,000 BTUs. So now if I take my sanity check and I check it to what my known variable was, if they match out, I know that my previous GPM calculation formula was correct. Okay, so um, that concludes this video. I hope this gives you a little better understanding of how the flow calculation uh, formula works. Again, it is equally as critical as the airflow calculation formula.